everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Draft Good Players. I am joined, as always, by my man to your right, to my left, Damian Parson. You can find him on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. And to my right, your left, my man Keith Sanchez, the smooth Keith Sanchez. You can find him on Twitter at the town code. I'm the host of this bad boy, Ray G. You can find me at Ray GQ. But this is the Draft Network's Draft Good Players, and we are going to talk about a damn good player today, two weeks into the college football season. Uh, the race for RB2 is up. Like, you guys, I don't I don't want to dive into at, at this point, man. You know, a lot of people, I don't know, I, I'm sure y'all are getting it the same way that, that I am. Like, oh, who's your R, RB2? Who's your RB6? Like, right now, I don't I don't really have a number. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my right. mind, like, okay, I want this guy to be the two. But we got a lot of football left to be played and a lot of stuff that's going to happen throughout the pre-draft process. But I think we can all confidently say that the RB1 is probably B. John Robinson. Is there any disagreement amongst you two gentlemen about B. John Robinson being the top back. DP, is he the top back, yes or no? Yes, he is. Keith, is B. John the top? Keith looked like he about to say something. Uh, is B. Uh, John the top back, Keith? <laughs> Don't do it, Keith. <laughs> no, we, we got to talk about it, and that's why we're here. We're here for Jameer Gibb, man, and we, we're here to, to break him down. And, I, and the thing is this, right? Coming into the summer, I gave Jameer Gibbs a first-round grade because – we seen in a little bit of what he was able to showcase at Georgia Tech that there was a lot of talent here. And you're like, you know what? If you put this guy at University of Alabama with that offensive line, with a Heisman winning quarterback and other weapons, he should be able to showcase well. And he was probably my number one guy that I was most excited to see, right? Especially out of the transfers. And listen, in today's NFL game, right? Like we want our running backs to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. That's so important. And I think Jameer Gibbs is a better pass catcher than with B. John Robinson. So we just have to see how that balance out the tables, right? When Because this is not the prototypical running back position that we're talking about anymore. This isn't the 80s and the 90s where we're going to get in the eye formation run straight downhill. So it may be some NFL franchises that be like, you know what? I like what Jameer Gibbs offers as a running back and being able to catch the ball out of the backfield also. I have B. John, run, B. John run, one, I'm sorry, but what I'm here to say is, look, we about to talk about Jameer Gibbs because he's a damn good football player. It, it, that was two minutes of Keith getting us <laughs> to the point where, yes, DP, Bijan is the one for now. <laughs> Bijan is the one from now. But we are here to talk Gibbs because that's what we, want. we want to talk about good players. And I think it's important to sort of, and it's sort of an accountability check to kind of follow these guys throughout the process, right? And when you look right. back at Gibbs, for, for those out there who do not know, right, Jameer Gibbs was a highly touted prospect coming out of high school, right? So this wasn't just a guy that, uh, let's just use Kenneth Walker, for example, right? He wasn't a highly touted recruit. He was at Wake. The scheme was all crazy. And then he transfers to a, a larger school, Michigan State, and balls out. Gibbs was that dude. Now, I don't know why he went to Georgia Tech in the first place. I have no clue. I, I, don't, I don't have any insight into his recruitment process or why he went to Georgia Tech. But he showed very well at Georgia Tech, and he's a talented player that ended up transferring to the premier school in college football, at least over the last you know decade at you know with the University of Alabama. So just to set the stage, this is not a guy that just came out of nowhere and 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 just all yeah. of a sudden now we're talking about him being a top prospect. No, yeah. Gibbs has been that guy, and he was that guy. Um, it at Georgia Tech and just some numbers that I just want to lay on you real quick. Looking at what he did last season at Georgia Tech, just to set the table for this year, right? Yards per team pass play, uh, yards per team play at Georgia Tech. I mean, he had more yards per team play than Devon A. Chain, Tank Bixby, Blake Quorum, Zach Evans, Devin Neal. The only players in the 2023 running back class that had more yards per team play than Jameer Gibbs was Bijan Robinson, Sean Tucker, and Deuce Vaughn out of Kansas State. You look at Gibbs, his receiving, uh, his reception share, the amount of receiving uh, receptions that he gets for that team, 16.7%, which is was second only to Deuce Vaughn amongst the 23 eligible running backs. Like, he was up there, so we know he can catch the ball. And then Dominator rating, which accounts for yardage and touchdowns, 23.4 uh, Dominator rating for Jameer Gibbs in 2021, which carries us over to Alabama and what he's done so far this season. Now, 
On the ground, it's been pedestrian. I'll be honest with you guys, right? Nine carries in week one, nine carries in week two. He had 93 versus Utah State. He had 22 yards versus the University of Texas this past weekend. Uh, only one reception in that first game, but I don't really count that a lot because they just blasted yeah, Utah State. And then he had yeah. nine catches for 74 yards. So from what you two have seen so far, and we're going to dive into the tape in a second, Keith, I'm going to start with you. What have you seen from Gibbs early, early this season to give you either confidence or a little bit of hesitation moving forward for the rest of the season as we get and as we progress towards the NFL draft process? Yeah, so far, I'm extremely confident with my prediction. Like coming off of the summer, I'm feeling really good. And, and here's why. And that showcase against Texas, he was their best football player. Let's be honest. If you if you remove Jameer Gibbs from that football team, I don't know how many points Alabama scored. They only scored 20, and it might have only been seven or, or maybe just a field goal because that guy made plays. And you know what was special? He made plays as a wide receiver. He was out there running routes. Like, he was lining up out wide. And for most running backs, right, that's just a decoy. That's just something so the quarterbacks can be able to tell, okay, if you're in man or if you're in zone as a defense. But for Jameer Gibbs, when he's lined out wide, you better be aware if you're a linebacker because the ball really might be coming his way. So that's what was exciting for me is that he really showed well. Like I think you said nine catches, 75 yards, a touchdown. And it was some really crucial plays, big time plays in the passing game. Oh, I'm, I'm on mute. My bad. DP, <laughs> what about you? Talk to me like just from everything that I laid, right? I laid the table for you. Highly touted recruit out of high school, productive player at Georgia Tech. We know the difficulties of that Georgia Tech offense. We're not going to dive into that today. Um, but just early this season, based on what you scouted, what you expected, has he lived up to the billing so far this season? Or where are you at with Gibbs and what you've seen so far? Man, similar to Keith, I'm confident, right? Like what we saw Saturday afternoon or morning if you're in Texas, what we saw Saturday was what Jameer Gibbs is. He is a dual threat, dynamic playmaker with the football in his hands. And I wanted the one thing that I, I kind of wish we see more. You talked about getting nine carries week one, nine carries, you know, week two this past Saturday. I want to see more because I'm seeing the toughness between the tackles. He's not he he's not afraid to run and and, and get gritty and get and get those tough yards, right? He's not afraid to put his body on the line and run and take two or three defenders on to get that extra yard or two in the fourth guy that's not the biggest back. He doesn't have the thickest, strongest, sturdiest, dense frame, but I'm seeing positive things in terms of him running between the tackles. But what he was able to do against Texas as a receiver, out of the backfield, lined up out wide, being a mismatch. And it, it was just a, it was really fun to watch. So I'm still confident in him. I just want to see uh, Nick Saban, and I think it's Bill O'Brien's the offensive coordinator for Alabama this year. I want to see more of him in the run game. That that explosiveness, we're going to see when we watch the film in just a little bit, just the, the ability to identify leveraging and second-level defenders. Those things give me hope and positive signs of him as a between-the-tackles runner. All right, and as DP said, we are going to take a look at some Jameer Gibbs film from this past Saturday's game versus the University of Texas. So if you're listening audio form, man, I, I highly, highly encourage you subscribe to the Draft Network YouTube channel and watch these film breakdowns that Keith, Dame, and I will be doing every single week. So let's dive into the tape right now and look at some Jameer Gibbs here uh, versus the University of Texas. So again, this is the game that he his most recent game. We will be trying to track some of these top rated players throughout the throughout the draft process. But let's dive into Jameer Gibbs, Alabama running back, uh, right here. DP, go ahead and set us up and let the people know what's going on on this play right now. All right, so they're in shotgun. He's flanking Bryce Young to the left, and what he like. I think all three of us are from the South. Ray, me and you from South Carolina, um, and, and Keith's from New Orleans. Where I grew up in South Carolina, we call this bird dogging. And what we what I'm, I'm explaining it is he is eyeing and staring at one gap, one side of the offensive line. He's in pass protection. He does he does not scan. This is a play where you're going to see 41. You know, for the, for people that are watching on YouTube, 41 is the middle linebacker. You see him approaching and creeping up to the line of scrimmage, showing that he is coming hot. He is blitzing. And the fact that Jameer Gibbs does not scan to identify where the free runner 
is coming from. It's like a quarterback trying to predetermine his read and his throw pre-snap. That's what he does in pass protection because they do show overloads uh, to the to the right side of the offensive line, multiple defenders and blitzers coming. But he doesn't scan and he leaves Bryce Young uncovered. And number forty-one, the middle linebacker gets back there free, scot free, untouched, and gets a sack on Jameer on um, on Bryce Young on the broadcast. They talked about how uh, Nick Saban pulled him out on some third down plays because he missed an assignment in pass pro. This was the one. Keith, I mean, I mean, yeah, DP and, pretty much laid it out for us. I mean, are you seeing sort of the same thing right here as well? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm seeing sort of the same thing. But I will also say this, right? We know that this is a, a play action style play, right? So Jameer Gibbs is trying to carry out that fake. And usually when you carry out that fake to where you're crossing over the quarterback's path, right? You're That's what you're responsible for. So now you're responsible for Bryce Young's right, right side, I'm sorry. And I think he sees, you see number two comes into the field. And I believe that that was probably the nickel corner or a cornerback. And he thinks that that's his responsibility, right? Like mm -hmm. it just makes sense that I'm crossing face i'm mm. blowing that way so this defender coming is my responsibility and i thought it was key after this play right and i think it was a mix-up also agreeing with dp because if you go to the very end of the play jameer gibbs turns around and he you know he's looking at like wait who was supposed what to have so yeah yeah that was a mix-up but to dp's point I, I think that jameer gibbs maybe you don't want to cut that you don't want to cross all the way over next time right yeah. and that's a small what i was taught at lsu was was listen we block bigs on bigs and smalls on smalls, meaning that we don't block defensive linemen, right? But any second-level defenders, linebackers, safeties, corners, running backs, you can be responsible for those guys. So I think that that would, would have been key for Jameer Gibbs to see that and before he crossed face because that's your nearest defender, right? So even if the center doesn't pick him up, that's a defender that you can be responsible for because he is a second-level defender. So, yeah, just going through that, and I, I agree with DP that, Matt, Pass protection is key for him because you want this guy to be on the field, right? First, second, third downs, passing game wise. But then you also want him to be on the field that just in case a uh, off a defense, I'm sorry, shows that hey, we're going to bring overload pressure. That you know you have Jameer Gibbs here. He can you know pass protect. He can pick up some second level defenders, and then Bryce Young can get the ball out hot. And that's one of the things, man, Keith. Uh, I worked at a couple of uh, uh, a couple of collegiate institutions inside the athletic department, close with the with the football team. And I know, like a lot of people out there, don't understand that there are uh, time limits in college for practice. And I can right. tell you, at least from what I've seen, it, it's it's one of those things where you work on pass pro, but you ain't got a lot of time to spend on that, right? Like you're nah. working on it, but it's, <laughs> it's very little time that you're spending on that, and. My big thing with with that is, does he have the want to to do it, right? Because yeah. it, some people don't want to nut up and, and, and get that middle linebacker that's blitzing, right? And and I think he's got enough want to to do it. And once he gets to the next level, like that's your full-time job, right? In the NFL, there is no there is no class. There is no study hall. He There will be the requisite time put in. Uh, to, to get that done but it's definitely I'm glad we started off with a with a negative play or an area of improvement for Jameer Gibbs because on this play right here DP we are going to see some of that talent as a rusher so let's run it for everybody uh, for everybody out there you're going to see Jameer Gibbs DP break us down he's, he's taking the ball what's going on here Man, I, I love the play design, Ray. Like just, you know, you got a ghost motion, a jet motion off of with a slice block um, on the inside zone, and he reads it perfectly between the tackles, right? But the one thing I love about this run, not only he's running to the right side, he finds the lane, he gets skinny to fit through it, boom, and that's not a big lane. Now, there's a defensive, there's a defensive tackle putting that arm out there, right? And if he's not as strong or doesn't have enough uh, strength in his body to run through that, that defensive tackle can bring him down with an arm tackle, but he runs through it, right? Now, as he's he's also sees that there's, there's a linebacker coming off or a defender coming off of a block, boom. And the flexibility yeah, here to get low. I'm yeah. talking limbo low. Like he gets that's, low. That's, that's that's what they call can't coach right there. You can't coach. Yeah, that. You, you can't you, coach that. Yeah, there is no practice drill for that move right there. None. Like that this, is this the is limbo. He's all... got the arm out. He's going under. That is the limbo <laughs> right there for real, DP. That is all feel. That that that's just natural, right? Like just natural God given ability to come in that. Now again, contact balance. His his offensive lineman nearly tackles him, right? His <laughs> offensive lineman nearly tackles him after he limbos the guy, but stays on his feet, gets his head up to see the next defender, and again, keep pressing, 
And, and if this, if the backside defender doesn't catch up to him, he look look at what he does to this defender, right? Gets his leg, gets him spread, gets him open with the with yeah. the ability to plant and cut up field. If he had a little more space without number twenty eight coming behind him, he may be able to make this guy miss and get vertical upfield for a bigger gain. But it just shows the vision, the patience, the contact balance, and just the natural talent that Jameer Gibbs has, man. Keith, I'm yeah, gonna just no. ask you this, Keith. It, it, you, you watch this run, man. And, you know, I've said, I, I don't know if he's a running back that you want to give the ball to 20 times a game out of the backfield. Just turn around, hand it to him. 20. I don't know if he's that guy. But if he can make plays like this consistently, he's going to make the most out of his 10 to 13 carries out of the backfield if he could consistently do stuff like this, show that contact balance. And I love the vision, right? Get your A lot of players, Keith, and you've seen it, right? They come out of this right here. And they're probably stumbling about to fall to the ground. Look at him get his eyes up, identify that defender right there, and then make that quick cut, Keith. Yeah, no, I agree. A lot of guys, they count themselves out after that, right? It's like, oh, man, two defenders on me. And, and DP played running back before, so he knows how that yep. is. Like, okay, I got a lot of traffic around me. I got the most out of the play. It's time to go down, move the chains, whether I picked up 10 yards or not, right? But, yeah, I think the athletic ability is special. And you talked about running the football, right? Like, let's think about it. To get a 100-yard game, this is a guy that can rip off a 70-yard touchdown run. Like DP talked about it. Not for that backside defender. You could fire up the band because he's scoring here. This is a guy that has four three speed, and man, I, I just love the way that he maneuvered in between the guards yes. and the tackles and the defenders. His he, his offensive lineman right on his back and just showed great balance. So I think the potential is there for this guy to be a really good in between the tackles running back and be highly productive. Matter of fact, Ray, if you if you go back to the start of this play, I, I want us to to key in for, for especially for the viewers that will see this on YouTube. Watch his footwork. I always talk about, as a running back, being able to navigate condensed spaces. The footwork is so fluid. It's so crisp. It's decisive to be able to move, cut, get away from defenders in tight quarters. Every running back does not have that, guys. Like I, there's, there's a term that I like to use. Some guys are runway running backs. Jameer Gibbs is showing that he's not a running back that needs a wide open lane to be productive. He knows how to find space, use his feet and his eyes. Oh, the, the, the phrase is eyes and feet have to be married. Yep. They have to be paired together. And this is a, a great depiction of that. And I always say that too, DP, when, when you trust, when you're, when you trust your eyes, right? You trust your eyes, your feet going to follow you, baby. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Trust what you see. And just be natural. Be God-given, like Keith said. All right, more Gibbs. Let's talk about what we got going on here. Tee us up, DP. What are we looking at? We see Gibbs in the in the gun formation again with, with Bryce Young split back, uh, back there next to uh, Bryce Young and shotgun. What are we looking at on this play? Man, it's a, it's a duo inside zone. You got, and basically for those who don't know what duo is, it's having du two double team blocks on the interior. So you got center guard blocking the D tackle on, on their on their hash, on their inside shade, and you got guard tackle blocking that defensive tackle that's head up uh, or inside shade of the guard. And what, what Jameer Gibbs has to do is read. I believe that's DeMarvin Overshone at the middle linebacker position. He has to read him. Read him and cut off of his leverage. And not everybody's able to do this. It takes patience, and you're going to see him. He shoots down, and Gibbs' eyes is on him. Gibbs sees where he is. Boom. Cut really swiftly and get up field. Good get play. those positive yards. Read yeah, the hole because typically you have two lanes. You just got to read it right. No, nah, this is spectacular intelligence when you talk about football intelligence right because the flow of this play like dp talked about you have two dual blocks right so you have a, a center guard combination yeah yeah you have a guard tackle and a center guard combination yep. and so the flow of the play is moving to the left right so naturally on this the people watching on the film number 60 would climb right he would climb and then it's like okay i can get out of there but what overshone does and a, a, a credit to him, right? He shoots that gap quickly. So what I'm the reason why I give B, um, Jameer Gibbs credit, I'm sorry, is because he understands where Overshawn just left from, right? Like if he's in this mm -hmm. gap, then I mean this gap is open. And I think that that was the special part about this, that the mental IQ about this, that before the play was snapped, he identified, you have to know what kind of front you have and you have to know where your linebackers are placed so that way you know the gaps that they're responsible for. So I think that was the most special part about this play was the, the up top, right, DP? The yeah. fact that he was able to know, yeah. okay, if Overshawn overflows, I know I have this backside gap and then now I just have to worry about this second level backside defender.
And I'll tell y'all what I like about this too, man. And it's subtle and it happens quick, but it's right here. After he reads the gap, right? You see a lot of running backs carry towards this linebacker right here. I don't know if it's linebacker or safety. He got north and south immediately. And it happened. Like, look how quick it happens. Boom. Now get upfield. And he almost is, it's, it's upfield, but he's veering back towards the left to, 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 to get away from that guy, right? No wasted yeah. motion, man. And that joint happens so quick, right? The read, get upfield, no, and, and picking up those yards, man. That's just man, that's a he, great he, illustration, and I highly, twitchy. highly it's encourage twitchy. you. It's twitchy. Yeah. If you're listening yeah, he, to he, this he, on he's audio. He's extremely controlled, man. Like, this, this is a guy that has maximum control. And y'all, y'all talked about the last clip where you're talking about your eyes with your feet. Some running backs see it. But their feet can't get them to it, right? Like, right. We see that right. Before. A lot of running backs, they see it, but their feet don't allow them to get them. <laughs> what whatever this guy eyes places on, his feet can get them there. And I think that's the special part. Like that was some dynamic stuff to be able to get vertical and you know move up the field. All right, DP, set us up. What we talk, what are we looking at right here? All right, so he is basically he's it, it's a it's kind of a, a play action, but you're gonna see him that I and I ID that that upper field, that second level defender. Gibbs has to account for him because he's going into the flats. So he knows, hey, I see this guy. He's in my purview, my vision, but he's the only threat that I have to worry about. And this is where he gets, this is where the special aspect of him as a receiver comes in at the chunk yardage. If you leave him one on one, right? We, we know some guys, I use the term functional, right? You can catch a screen, you could be the dump off guy, but are you a weapon, you know, like an Alvin Kamara, like a Christian McCaffrey, where I don't care if that's a linebacker, a safety, or a DB. One on one, I trust that back to make that play. And once he identifies that I got one guy to worry about, boom, makes a miss, and now I, I shift gears and I get upfield. And if if he had more downfield blocking, like like Keith said earlier, you could strike up the band because it would have been yeah. six. But just the ability to ID quickly process all right now let me get into my route, make myself available for Bryce Young coming from the left to the right side of the formation get in the flats, catch this ball, and then make a play for my offense. Do you guys agree, Keith? I I always say there's a difference between a running back that can catch passes and a running back that can be deployed as a pass-catching weapon. There's a difference. Damn near every running back can catch the ball. You just dump it to them, right? They can catch it. But can you be deployed as a weapon? Can I split you out wide? Can I can I trust you to run those Texas routes, those choice routes, those option routes? Can I deploy you as a pass-catching weapon? What I've seen from Gibbs, Keith, is he is 100% a pass-catching weapon. Yeah, and I'm going to hit back on the IQ part again. So when he takes this play action, right, like you see a lot of running backs, what they'll do is they'll try to carry up field just a little bit more. And, and when, what happens is you carry up field, what you wind up doing, you wind up running into the linebacker, yeah. right? Yes, but give yes. credit to Jameer Gibbs, he understands spacing. And that's a, a huge part when you talk about a pass catching threat, right? He understands spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to barely crack through of our offensive line across the line of scrimmage barely. and immediately make myself available because this is the thing. I want to get the ball as quickly as possible so I can turn around and I know I have this one defender that I have to beat to pick up significant yardage. So, like I said, I think it's another IQ. Like, this is this is easy money for Gibbs. That's why he turned around so quick. He's like, you know what? <laughs> Give me this football. Yeah. <laughs> and I know for sure I'm going to make him miss. So, I mean, it, it's credit to that, man. It, that that's, that's high IQ. Football but this is what here. y'all do, right? Because most people will see this and be like, oh, that's an easy uh, – he was wide open, easy play. Right. But he literally barely gets past the line of scrimmage. He did not carry upfield at all. Right. I mean, he's barely across where the offensive linemen are. I see that defender. Let me just turn around. Let me get my head around now. I mean, he's not even in his route, y'all. Like, he hadn't even no. carried – it's the IQ, Keith. You've said this multiple times. DP, you're highlighting and identifying the defenders that he must account for, and you're seeing him execute it. So while people may look at the stat line, uh, only 22 rushing yards, uh, not not a really great performance. Uh, he had a long run. It's the it's the nuances of the game in the position that make players special and good. And you two are hitting on exactly why uh, Gibbs is special and. I know what this play is, but DP <laughs> said it. Because this is what I love. I'm excited about this. Talk to us. Man, you know, for, for those watching on YouTube, it's, it's man across the board, right? Yep. You have a stand-up outside linebacker that is accounting and man-to-man, and it's a mismatch <laughs> on <laughs> Jameer <laughs> Gibbs. And it's a straight red alert, barbecue chicken. Bar- this is not a good matchup for this, for this stand-up outside <laughs> linebacker. 
<laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> and when he releases, we talk about IQ, right? He understands this dude can't run with me. He can't move with me. I'm not going to oversell the the because the, the Texas yep. right, you got to oversell the flat and come back inside. He no, I'm gonna do this really quickly. I'm gonna press one step, boom, and I'm gonna cut right across from you. And now I'm gonna get in the open field, get chunk yardage to keep my offense on in rhythm and ahead of the chains. And it's those type of plays, man, where you want to say, hey, I'm a man up because they want to bring uh, number forty one again, similar similar to earlier the first play. They brought that little linebacker on the blitz. And they left that edge, that stand-up edge, one-on-one with Jameer Gibbs. And he understands. Again, reading leverage. Look at the hips. It's segmented movement from this guy, right? Think this guy is not is not fluid. So he, he understands it. And I'm going to cut right off of you. And now you see the segmented, labored movement. He's in chase. He's in trail. And Jameer Gibbs is like, Bryce, give it to me. This is, this is the moment. Give it to me and watch me do my work. And then the natural receiving ability, right? Well, a lot of times, you know, hey, look the ball in. Don't turn around too quick. Right. Bryce, uh, not Bryce, but Jameer Gibbs catches these passes and he immediately turns around because he trusts his hands because he's yep. a natural catcher of the football. It's not something where I got to hit the jugs machine all day long to, to get better. He's a natural receiver. He catches it. He knows it's in his grip. And now I can turn up and make a play. Keith, what do you see, man? No, I, I see the same thing. And the key is to the beginning of the play, like DP talked about, right? That he didn't try to oversell this because if he if he crossed his face of this defender, right? Now it's hard for him to get back to the other side of the defender to be able to run this Texas route. So like you said, he makes it simple, right? Like, you know what? I understand leverage. I'm already even with him right now. If I go past this, I won't be even with him. And I'm actually losing leverage for where I'm trying to get. So now and he's watch still the, the separation, field. Keith. Watch the yep. separation he, he, he creates. Once he gets up, feel like that's at least two to three. That's at least two and a half to three yeah. yards of separation. And at number 18, it's just like, why was I in man coverage again? Like, what was the plan here? Because this was not working for me. You see, what square was the hips. plan? What I mean, what, I don't I, know. Honestly, what's the plan? I, I can guarantee you the defensive coordinator heard about this one uh, from the head coach after this. Year. Like, <laughs> what were we doing? <laughs> they left the middle of the field vacated, wide open. Wide open and that's like I said, like like he said, and like I said, the IQ to read the hips of that defender yeah. and like, man, I'm not gonna elongate this process. Let me stab, get upfield, and make myself available. And that's what I love about him too. And as a pass catcher, he makes himself available. available. He's confident too. He's confident. Keith, yes. can I ask you a question? Because you saw you got to see a dynamic pass catcher at LSU and Clyde Edwards Elaire and just his how he would operate. When you're looking at Gibbs catch this ball, is this is he a natural is he a natural hands catcher? Is he a natural catcher of the football out of the backfield? Yeah, I mean, and you see it because he, he one he catches it in stride, right? Or he he looks it in first, but then he catches it in stride, meaning that you know guys that aren't comfortable because they slow their momentum all the way down, right? This guy catches it in stride. He he pokes his hand out there. He's also a guy that you wouldn't consider a body catcher where they feel like they got to trap the ball against their pads. So this is a natural pass catcher and. Let me tell you this, being around running backs, those who can catch and comfortable with it and those who can't, you can tell just by the way that once they get open, if they're trying to get open, right? Because some running backs, they'll run themselves into being covered, right? Because it's like, <laughs> man, I don't really want the football at the end of the day. DP knows what I'm talking about. But yes. this guy tries to get open. He makes an effort. He can't, like, I guarantee you, he practices his route running in practice to get open and get the football. So, mm -hmm. man, this, this guy is 100% comfortable in what, in what he's doing. And a key point about this play that we're talking about, I know for a fact, because I cut it up too, this play came with a minute 24 left in the game. Yes. And you're putting, yeah. you're putting your running back in position to get the ball. Listen, Jermaine Burden, Kobe Prentice, all these guys, a minute 24 left in the game. They got to have this, right? Let's dial yeah, up a play for Jameer Gibbs, right? That, that tells you what you need to know about the trust and chunk, confidence and that they have. Chunk yardage at that rate. There chunk it, uh, yardage. Let's go. I He's out wide now. He is split out yes. wide. Jermaine Burton is in the slot. Uh, look, talk to us about the play, man. So he's yeah, he's out. He's out wide outside the numbers to to Bryce's left in the low red zone. And you're gonna see the safety is gonna take. Uh, I think it's Jermaine Burton in the slot, um, and they're gonna have two underneath defenders trying to crowd the inside hashes so that no slants or digs can get in there. But it's the fact that it becomes a scramble drill where. Bryce Young faces pressure, and Jameer Gibbs understands, man, if nobody else is going to get available for Bryce, I am. 
and I'm probably the guy that has the best matchup out of everybody on the field. So he runs a quick little stop route, and then he explodes because yeah. he realizes I there's there's open grass on that tee for Texas. Let me get to that spot and be available for Bryce, and then Bryce delivers an on-target pass while he's taking a hit. And this was the play that really put them in, in, in position to win this game. He put his damn hand up like he's a wide receiver, man. I mean, he put his yeah, hand up I, like he's he's a receiver. Throw it to me. Like, give it to me. Give it to me. I'm there. I, I was about to say that because Jamison Williams was number one for Alabama last yeah. year, right? Like he, yep. he looks like Jamison out there playing receiver. Yeah, man. Throwing his hand up. Yep. And and, and and talk about relationships and because we, we talked about this Alabama offense, right? And how it sputtered and you know, building trust. Not only did Jameer Gibbs feel like he had to get open for Bryce Young. But Bryce Young knew to look for Jameer Gibbs, right? Yes. Like, and that's something that's going to continue to develop because we're talking about a guy that transferred in. So this is his first year playing with Bryce Young, and this is only the second game of the season. So I think things are going to continue. And, and this was a showcase game because you, you not only build trust with the quarterback, but as players, you have to build trust with the coaches, right? So now they're going in there this week, and they're like, you know what? This guy proved himself that he's a real pass catcher. What are the other things that we can do? And so don't be surprised if next week and the following weeks you start to see this guy getting bubble screens, right, or, or just, you know, tunnel screens from that position. And he's a running back. He still runs with power. So he can be a dangerous, dynamic uh, threat from that position also. Real quick, Ray, can, I want to I compile. I want to add on to what, what Keith just said there. Yeah, man. And we think about, we think about going forward, right? Our, I live in Carolina. I've, I've watched Christian McCaffrey since he was drafted. And I recall, even with Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey would make things easier for his receivers to get open because yeah. teams start doubling him. So it's like you think about featuring Gibbs in that role as that dangerous, dynamic pass catcher. Now you got safeties trying to help the linebackers. Their safeties are triggering down to bracket him, which then opens up what? It opens up passes over the top. If you're going to displace yourself to double our running back, Jermaine Burton, now you got you got to win that matchup, but we can get you on the on the post out of the slant, you know, out of the slot. You know, Kobe, uh, Kobe Prentice or when Tyler Harrow gets back. And, and listen, if you have not watched the film or watched any of the highlights on Tyler Harrow, if you give him space, he's going to hurt you. He's got that type of speed. So when defenses start to key in too much on, on Jameer Gibbs, that can make the, the receivers' lives that much easier to win their matchups. Keith, the Alabama schedule, the next two weeks, pretty, pretty light, okay? They've got Louisiana Monroe and they've got Vanderbilt. After that, KJ Jefferson in Arkansas, Texas A&M, Tennessee, Mississippi State, uh, uh, LSU, Ole Miss. They got Austin P. Homecoming game. Then they've got Auburn. What do you? What do you want to see? And we're not done talking about Gibbs. We will look at him. We'll give him a couple of weeks, get some more tape on him. But we'll come back before the end of the season. What do you want to see from Gibbs moving forward throughout the season to really? make you feel confident once we get to the draft process to say he is my RB2 or RB1 or top rated player. What do you want to see? You see, I threw that for Keith. <laughs> DP, I ain't going to go there with you. Keith, what do you need to see from him? And, and no, no, nah, the hell with that. What would you need to see from him to say he is my RB1? What do you want to see from him to say, like, I feel comfortable that this ain't fantasy. I'm talking NFL his skill set's going to translate in the NFL. We're seeing the Ecklers, the Camaras, these pass-catching running backs, right, these weapons. What would he need to do for you to see that throughout the rest of the season? I just want a consistent workload in between the tackles. That, that's the number one thing. Man. You could become a dynamic guy in between the tackles, and that's why we went through the film sessions because the, the when people look at the stat score, right, and they look, okay, he rushed for this many yards, but you've seen the potential in the runs, right? That's why we broke it down that this guy was a couple runs away from ripping it off for 50, 60, 70 yards. So I want not only him but the rest of this Alabama offense to become more dynamic so he can run the ball in between the tackles because guess what? When it comes to catching the ball as a running back, it's check mark, right? Like, he's number one. I don't foresee a running back come and catch him as far as that. Like, the guy's almost a wide receiver skill set. But I want to see him run the ball in between the tackles more consistently. And my comp for him has been Aaron Jones. I think the same way that the Packers use Aaron Jones, Jameer Gibbs is 205 pounds. 
Aaron Jones is listed at 210, right? So you're talking about a fairly similar body profile, but the things that they can do, they can beat you by themselves because they simply change the numbers as far as who can match up with who. A, a linebacker against Jameer Gibbs is not going to help. Uh, I'm not sure if a safety will, right? So right. I, I think that they just changed the game, and this is a guy that I want to make sure I can have the on the field on first and second downs, so I want to make sure he can run the ball in between the tackles. DP, what do you want to see? I mean, he's got he's got a couple of easy ones coming up, and then it gets rough, right? It gets rough in the middle. Yeah. What do you want to see? Or let me let me ask you this: a better question for you. Let's switch it up from Keith a little bit. Is Alabama going to trust him enough to give him more consistent work? Because being honest here, y'all, this is the first time in in at least like five or six years where the main back ain't getting the ball main back levels of work, right? I think yeah. Jameer Gibbs, Brian Robinson, shout out to that young man. I hope he comes back and absolutely crushes for the commanders. But he wasn't as talented as Jameer Gibbs, and he wasn't as talented as Najee Harris. But it seems like every time Alabama finds a guy, they give him 250 carries, 275 yeah. carries. Why is Gibbs not getting the work on the ground? I know it's only two games in, y'all. But what's going on, DP? Is this going to change? Or do they see him just more so as that pass-catching running back and they want to give Jace McClellan more of the between the 20 carries? Man, I, I hope it changes, right? I'll put it like that. I hope it changes. Um, I do feel like the, the offensive line need, still needs some some gelling and some growth together uh, to get better. We've seen some leaky things in that same game where free runners – like not you know miscommunication you know different things of that nature in pass pro and then there were some plays where in the run game where they didn't get vertical push they didn't reset the line of scrimmage and help you know either back out right uh jace mcclellan had that big uh zone run where he cut it up for the long touchdown but after that i don't even think he was really no. effective running the ball either uh, so yeah. it's like i think it's, it's it starts in the trenches and getting these guys kind of put, gel together on, on one accord and just being more physical at the point of attack. You know what I mean? That 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 duo run where he jump cut it, like, I like that. Get get that vertical push. Move these defensive tackles out of the way so that this young man can make, make things happen. But I think going forward, I feel like with that and then the coaches wanting to see him possibly just earn more of those carries uh, and showcasing more of his ability. So these next two, you say, right, you say next two weeks, this is a little bit easier. I right. would like to see him give him 15 carries in both games. You know what I mean? Yeah. And at the same time, you talked about how they fed the other backs. They may just feed him in a different way. And he may be one of those backs that has the 70 receptions that okay. we're not used to seeing. Uh, Cause we, unfortunately, Alvin Kamara, when he was at Alabama, was in a loaded room. So we never got to see <laughs> yeah. what they were going to do with him. Uh, and we saw what he could do at Tennessee when he got his moment. Um, it would have been a great precursor to what they possibly could do with uh, Jameer Gibbs. So I've got to ask the question. Jameer Gibbs, good player, right? He is a good yep. player, right? Damn Keith? good player. All right, yeah. damn good player. DP, damn good player. And Keith, yes, sir. We, will, uh, we will poke the bear all season with your RB1 <laughs> who will continue to poke. But uh, for everybody out there listening or watching, we appreciate it. Uh, if you're listening via the podcast, uh, please rate and review the podcast. And if you are watching, which you should be, you should listen to it on podcast and then come back and watch the video. Make sure you hit a thumbs up button, subscribe, like the content, and comment below. Let us know who you want us to take a look at. And we talk about everybody. So if you want a safety, if you want a backer, if you want a D tackle, you want whatever it is, let us know. Keith, Dame, and myself will find the film. We will break it down and we will be here every single week uh, for you. So for Dame, for Keith, for Ray, for the Draft Network, we appreciate you tapping in. Y'all enjoy your week. See y'all next week. We out. Peace out.